Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go ahead and open up. Oh, who are we going to open up? Where the kids at? That a kid? All right, Jaden. What we got? Where we going? Where we going to start? Give me a Bible verse. I mean, give me a give me a book of the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Give me a uh, give me a, a chapter, and give me a give me a give me a give me a verse. What we got? Come on. John. John. Uh oh, John. What else? Give me a number. John 13, give me another number. It's John chapter 13, verse 12. I think feel like it's about to be good. Let me see. It's John chapter 13, verse 12. I appreciate you, Jaden. Thank you. It's John chapter 13, verse 12. What we got? I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Mm. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Mm. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Right? He said the spirit of truth is going to come, and he's going to guide you into all things. Right? He said he ain't going to tell you of himself. He said, whatever he hear, that's what he going to tell you. Who he going to hear from? The Father. He going to hear that from the Father. Right? Yahushua said, I'm about to get up out of here. So when I get up out of here, the Spirit is going to have to lead you. Right? That's why the book tell us to follow the Spirit. Otherwise, we're not being led by anything. When Yahushua was here, we could follow him. Right? When Yahushua go... He leaves the spirit then to guide us into all things that are good. So that's what we come here to learn about. We come here to try to learn. Keep reading. I ain't going to cut it short. Keep reading. Watch this. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Mm -hmm. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Mm -hmm. A little while and ye shall not see me. He said what? A little while and you shall not see me. Uh huh. And again, a little while and you shall see me because I go to the Father. Uh huh. Hey, what's going on? Excuse me. I can't pronounce your name, but I appreciate you. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he has said unto us? A little while and you shall not see me. Uh huh. And again, a little while and you shall see me. And because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he says a little while? Mm -hmm. We cannot tell what he says. Now, Yahshua knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them, Watch this. Do you inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while and ye shall not see me? And they were trying to figure while. it out. They were saying basically, what does that mean? Like he's saying a little while. Because you got you to gotta put yourself in their position. It's all, you know, you know when we a Christian, we didn't really, you know what I'm saying? We didn't really put ourselves... In the moment, you know what I'm saying? We just kind of read it like, oh, look how wonderful that sounds. But, you know what I'm You got to really put yourself there. These are people who looked at this as a man walking around, and this is a pretty good guy, right? This is a pretty, like, this is a pretty remarkable person. But they didn't look at him, look at him like God, right? They just said, this is a pretty remarkable person. So he walking around, and he come back to them. He said, look, in a little while, y'all not going to see me. A little while after that, y'all going to see me again, Right? 
So he just letting them know, and they're like, what does he mean by that? He going to go away and come back? For us, he's talking about the second coming, right? But we didn't have, we, you know what I'm saying? We had that knowledge. They didn't have that knowledge. So them, they looking like they inquire amongst themselves, like, what is that? You know what I'm saying? What are you talking about? Watch it. Keep going. This is a good one, Jay. Not like this. What? This is uh, John chapter 13, verse what? Uh, the one on verse 18, huh? 19. You ain't in chapter 13. He ain't in chapter 13 at all, huh? What? You in 16. Oh. Good oh gracious. God, I'm to all right, we, yeah, Jay, Jay, we cheated you. All right, let's go. It's John chapter 13, verse what? 12. Verse 12. It's John chapter 13, verse 12. Got to excuse the people. He ain't got his glasses on today. Come on, let's do it. All right, guys. There you go. <laughs> 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 yes, it does. That's funny. I heard, some, I heard the hard downstairs. I was like, he's just talking. I'm like, I just hear my boy. The whole time he's louder than I am. You should put the little egg cartons on it for us. Uh, yeah, how seriously. They yeah. How they insulate, I'm not insulated, but uh, whatever the word is. That's what that was for? That works? Mm -hmm. The egg cartons? Didn't know that. This is John chapter 13, verse 12 for real this time. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Mm-hmm. You call me master and lord, and you say, well, for so I am. Mm -hmm. If I then, your lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Mm. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his lord. He said, the servant is not greater than his lord. Say mm -hmm. it again. The servant is not greater than his lord. Okay. Neither he that is sent greater than he that is that sent him. Uh huh. If ye know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Uh huh. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. Mm -hmm. if that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Mm hmm. Now I tell you before it come that when it is for what reason past, ye may believe that I am he. He said the reason why I'm telling you before it happens so that when it happens you gonna believe in me. It's important that we know that. The whole time, the most a lot of times we a lot of times we we we've been tricked into thinking that we gotta have blind faith. But the book is not built off of that. The book is built off of listen, I'm gonna show you everything that you need to see, or I'm gonna have somebody explain to you everything that they saw that you need to see, or that, that they that they needed to see so that you could trust in what they said. Either way, you're gonna have some type of evidence to make your 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 decision. Right? So that's what we try to do. We try to look at it and understand the evidence. What is the book saying that gives us evidence to believe in what it's talking about? It's not blind faith. The only reason that the faith, the only person, you have blind faith, that's foolishness. That just don't make no sense. It's weak. Somebody just gonna come. It's like what Paul said, we're gonna be swayed around with every wind of doctrine. As soon as the wind blows, you're just gonna be like, oh, now I wanna do something else. That's what these people do. And they get tired of it. They get frustrated with, okay, wait. So the Catholics, I used to be a Catholic, but Catholics not right. Okay, so now I'm a Protestant. And of the Protestants, I'm a Baptist, but the Baptist not right. Okay, okay. Let me go to the Pentecostal. Okay, they not right either. Okay, now I'm just non-denominational. Okay, wait, they wrong too. Okay, let me try being a Hebrew. Oh, wait, okay, we argue in Hebrew too. So it's like, everything they like, man, nothing is right. Everything confusion, don't nobody agree. So every when the doctrine, they changing up and they switching. And so eventually... They ain't going to denounce God all the way in their mind, right? So what they say, even though they denounce them anyway, but what they say is, they say, you know what? I'm not religious. Guess what I am? I'm spiritual. I have a personal relationship with him. So now, now I can connect with God on a person. You can't tell me what's right or wrong because me and God just told a secret to one another. You didn't hear our secret anyway, right? This is between me and God. This ain't, this ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. You can't judge me. Because how you know what God said to me? He may have told you, God give it to you one way, he's going to give it to me a different way. Right? And we do that because I don't want anybody to tell me I'm wrong anymore. I don't want anybody to be, you know what I'm saying? I'm tired of going this way and going that way. And it's, I understand that, right? You, I mean, you got to appreciate that. Like, I want to believe in God, but I don't know exactly which way to believe because everybody say this is wrong, everybody say that's wrong. But that's not the solution. 
You know what I'm saying? The solution is not to make up some, some personal God to yourself. The solution is to get in the book and understand it. We have to, we have to dig down. And when we get in the book and understand it, you look and you see, Yahushua told us. I'm telling you this before it happens so that you know it's real. So now you can look into the word and say, okay, I know the word is real. Let me take it for what it says. What was he talking about? What, what was he telling us before it happened? That we may believe. Well, yeah, but what, what was he going to tell us? What are you going to tell us? That somebody about to betray him? Yeah. yeah. The one that lifted up his heel against him. Right? That's another thing we have to look at. He said right before, he said, I chose these people. It's even better. When I thought, when I thought we was reading what you picked out, it was good. And then we really reading what you picked out? Oh, this is perfect here. Right? He looked at it and he trying to tell you, the trouble is going to come to me. I know it's coming. But notice he chose everybody in that circle. He even said it. Read that thing one more time. He said, look, I know who I chose. But one of y'all going to switch up. Watch this. Watch what the book say. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. But that he... But that the scripture may be fulfilled, he that eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Uh-huh. Now I tell you before it come that when it come to pass, you may believe that I am he. So he chose it and he knew that it was coming. Grab uh grab Luke chapter 17. That one just apply to Yahushua. He's showing us more than that. A lot of times we just let too much stuff shake us. We be riding steady for a little bit, then something come, that thing just shake us all up. We let too much shake us. You think he let Judah shake him? He let me not know what's coming. I'm telling y'all so y'all know when it happened. Some of this stuff we ought to know this coming. This is Luke. This is what he told us. So at first he's talking about him. I know that you I know Judas is about to betray me. Right? I know this for a fact, right? Let's hear what he gotta say to us. This is Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Then said he unto the disciples, uh -huh. it is impossible, but that offenses will come. He said, they have to come. But woe unto him through whom they come. Right? He said, it's impossible. It's no way possible except that offenses come. Like, if they're going, people are going to offend you. People are going to sin against you. People are going to do things wrong. He said, it's imp for that not to happen is impossible. Right? That's going to happen. So why don't we see that stuff coming? That people hurt our feelings, that people make us mad, that people all that stuff. That stuff we got to be able to see. We know it's coming. He knew it was coming. That's why I didn't shake him. He's able to keep it moving. We can't let all this stuff shake us. It knock us off. It set us back. It killed time. We were just talking to Jaden. I mean, he go through all this stuff and doing this stuff. That stuff killed time. You only, you only gonna make one or two decisions. You gonna go all the way out there or you gonna stay your butt home? It's one or the two. At the end of the day, that's where you, it's, it's gonna end up. You gonna be just far out there. For us, you go to, your butt gonna go to hell or your butt enter into the kingdom. That's how I go for us. Right? So when it comes down to that, why am I gonna kill all this time playing the middle? Knowing that one day I'm going to make it on this side or I'm going to make it on that side. Why am I going to kill all this time playing in the middle? When we sit here and we say, you know what? This is it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, I'm serious this time. I'm focused on God. This is what we got to do. I'm not going to sin no more. Or I'm just tired. Even we don't get to that point. I'm just tired of sinning. I'm tired of not being righteous. And we get to saying all this stuff to ourselves. When we get to that point, we be feeling good. Then all of a sudden, somebody offended. Some make us mad. Some hurt our feelings. Some happen. And then we move out the way. We break all that. All that go to the wayside. Right? And why does that happen? Because we acting like we didn't know it was coming. The man sat here and told us, you know it's coming. Keep reading. Watch this. I appreciate you, sis. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck 
and he cast into the sea. So what are we trying to get our revenge for? Don't you know you get in the way of it? You just get in the way. Our law taught, teach us what? Eye for a what? Eye for an eye. Tooth for a what? Tooth for a tooth. If somebody punched me in my eye, knocked my darn eye out, does that mean I can reach back? And I'm talking about in our law. I'm talking about Old Testament done away law. Right? If somebody punched me in my eye, that means I can reach back out to them and pull out their eye? Gotta go to the judge. No. I can never seek my own vengeance. I go to the judge. And guess what the judge gonna say? Oh, he knocked your eye out? That He did it? Oh, yeah, you do got blood on your head. All right, pull out his eye. The judge commands it. We have to put the, everything that we have in the judge's hands. We do it with these white folks. When was the last time somebody, you know what I'm saying, you didn't get, you, get yourself into a darn fender bender? When was the last time you jumped out and wrote somebody a ticket? <laughs> oh, no, you just gave me a fender bender. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me. I just, that never happened. It's not going to happen. When was the last time you told them, uh, okay, you can uh, take traffic school or you can, uh, you know what I'm saying, have all these demerits against your life? When was the last time you did it? That's not going to happen. With these white folks, we happily go to their judges. We don't even be seeking no, let one of these companies do us wrong. When was the last time one of us was like, you know what, I'm about to go out there and just knock that company. Some of us might say something like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to knock the, I'm about to knock out the CEO. I'm about to knock out that manager. Some of us might say, you know what I'm saying? Some of us a little wild. You know what I'm saying? We might say, but at the end of the day, we're going to look at, you know what? I'll take that company to court. Because I'm going to let the judge decide it. It's no different. There ain't nothing wrong with asking for vengeance. There ain't nothing wrong with talking to most high God say, you know what? Man, look, you need to do something with this dude. You need to do something with her. Right? They hurt my feelings. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with crying out to the most high God and just saying, you know what? This is how I feel. If you can't talk to the most high God about how you feel, you definitely can't. You, I mean, where, what you, where else you going to go? A lot of times when we pray, though, we try to have perfect prayers. Yeah, we try, you know what I'm saying? We try to make that thing sound good. Try to make it, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what you're supposed to say. Ain't got time for that. I'm praying to my by myself. I be praying, like, in the shower. I pray. Sometimes I come out here, go downstairs, just sit on the couch. I'm Nobody around, I'm praying, and I'm trying to have a perfect prayer? Oh, please. Oh, please. I kid you not. I wanted one kid. I was praying most of the listen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go ahead and shut her up. You know what I'm saying? Close everything. Let the door close. The Bible say, I'm telling you, the Bible say any door that you close can't be open. <laughs> now he slapped my junk down, obviously. But still, at least I got it off my heart. She came in there with that, you know what I'm saying? He came in there with a funky t-shirt. Talking about, you know what I'm saying? It's a hard hat on a t-shirt. Talking about, yeah, little, little brother. I look at that thing. <laughs> I looked at that thing, but the most high God dealt with me. Just in that moment, all this time I've been praying about that thing the whole time, the most high God warming me up to the idea. I'm sitting here screaming. Don't let that thing happen. Go ahead. Lord, is she praying at the same time? Slap her down. He slapped my junk down, but the whole time he warming me up to the whole thing. So by the time it happened, I want to be mad. And I'm just like, well, that's just darn cute. Here we go. We at it. Now I love my little black boy. What? You got to <laughs> no, nah, but you know, I was just a show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to keep that. You know what I'm saying? You can't let them know you. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You, gotta, you get there like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You kind of happy about that thing, but happy you not. So one hand is going down, the other one, yeah. Like that. Yeah, I was ashamed. <laughs> you call yourself a husband. <laughs> but no, you just got to be honest with God. That's what I want. I didn't want another kid. Right? And it's like, yeah, you don't want to. I wouldn't pray that in front of y'all. I, I wouldn't though. <laughs> I probably said that thing many times, in my son, right? But you know what I'm saying? It's not like in public. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna pray. Oh Lord, you know what I'm saying? Anybody got a prayer request? Yeah, pray my wife don't get pregnant no more. <laughs> Knowing that my wife praying against the the, the opposite. I, I mean, I might, but when I'm talking to God by myself, why wouldn't I? Y'all, y'all don't want to hear some of my darn prayer. <laughs> I mean. Listen, I'll be trying to light some people up. Somebody made me mad at work. Yeah. I like, yeah, get they butt, Lord. He 
still be getting them sometime, but it's still at the end of the day. Right. I just need it. Sometimes I just need the release. Sometimes just saying it out loud and hearing myself saying it, I'll be like, all right, you being ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. Bro, you being ridiculous. You just ask God to strike somebody down. You just, for what? Right? And then that God deal with you in those moments. We just have to get to a point where we are, our, you know how Christians say that our relationship with God? We have to get to the point where our relationship with God is based off of the book. And if you look at the book, I mean, you open, you let the Christian psalm you to death all you want. You open up Psalms and you read that thing with a fair mind. You read that darn Psalm. Ain't nothing sweet about Psalms. The whole time they talking about, you kill my darn enemies, Lord. Whole time they killing folk. Strike they butt, Lord. That's where I got it from. I looked at it, I said, oh, Psalm? Oh, that's all I got to do? I got to break it? Okay. You can love thy neighbor then. You can love thy neighbor. So, okay. What's love? What? What is love? Obeying the most high's commandment. How I, is love how I feel? No. Listen, I can hate your darn stinking guts on the inside. But when you come to my face and you ask me for something, guess what I got to do? Yeah. I got to love my darn neighbor. You my neighbor, you my brother, you my sister. What I'm going to do? I don't care. These people call that faith. Oh, you smile in my face and you, you know what I'm saying, you try to treat me right, but really deep down, you don't like me. That what, They got their minds so twisted. They call that fake. You know what's fake? Me treating you bad. Me treating you bad. That's fake. Most of our God told me don't treat you bad and I'm treating you bad. That's fake. If I, if on the inside I feel like, you know what, I just cannot stand him. I don't know why. He, I just, I, but when it comes down to it, I look out for my brother and I do what I'm supposed to do. I obey the, the commandments. You know what that is? That's righteousness. That's resisting temptation. Okay, y'all don't believe me. All right, let's look at it. Let's say I have this sneaking urge, right? I'm not married, right? But I had this sneaking urge to fornicate, Right? On the inside, that's what I want to do. But you know what I say? No, I'm going to keep my virginity. Is that fake? Oh, all of a sudden, that's noble. That's good at that moment. But when it comes to, you know what? I want to not. Mm. Oh, no, nah, brother. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Take it. No, nah, I get your plate. Don't worry about it. That's fake at that point. They have our minds messed up. So on the inside, when I'm praying, let me tell you something. Listen, Lord, I can't believe he didn't do Listen, I just need you to handle it. When I'm praying, I can't knock him out. Right? I can't. I mean, I just can't knock him out. You ain't going to let me knock him out. But, Lord, you, your head can reach a lot farther than mine. <laughs> I mean, that's my prayer. Right. After I get done, hey, hey, brother, what's going on? How you doing? I appreciate you. I was praying for you. <laughs> brother, I, no, no. No, brother, you in my prayer. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you know what I'm saying? No, I'm just saying, but that because I'm not lying. You just tell him, like, no, brother, you in my prayer. But you know how you look at it. Yeah. Right? No, for real. And, and, and on the series, no, you just got to, you have to be honest, right? You have to be honest with God. You will see, it's almost like like therapy. It's almost like there, because you what you're doing is you you hearing yourself out. And the most high God dealing with you and that stuff. If it come from a bad place, he gonna deal with you. And then you never know. I kid you not. It's some people that have been moved out. Yeah, all of them pulled out of the pillow and water spilled all over the couch. Right? So, you know what I'm saying? After, after a while, you start to look at this stuff and you start saying, you know what? It's time for us to line up with the book. Right? If the book says it, that's how we live off of it. The examples of prayers in the book, that's how we going to pray. You can find all types of them. Right? High, low, all types of prayer. Right? That's what we look at. Let's go ahead and grab Judges. This is Judges uh, chapter 6.
It's Judges chapter 6. Give me verse 1. <coughs> Is it ripped or just unzipped? I'm about to get on my hands and knees now. <laughs> this is uh, this is Judges chapter six, verse one. What the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. What the children of Israel do? Did evil in the sight of the Lord. Oh goodness! And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. Mm -hmm. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens, which are the mountains and caves and strongholds. Mm -hmm. And so it was, when Israel had sown, that the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites, and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them, and destroyed the increase of the earth, till thou come unto Gaza, mm -hmm. and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, ox, nor donkey. Mm -hmm. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude, for mm -hmm. both they and their camels were without number. Mm -hmm. and they entered into the land to destroy it, and Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Right? So the children of Israel, when they saw the Midianites were taking over stuff, what they start doing? They start praying out to the Most High God, like, man, rescue us, save us, help us out a little bit. Right? Let's hear about it. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, mm -hmm. I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you mm -hmm. and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. Mm -hmm. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Mm -hmm. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Orpha, Ophrah, and pertained unto Joash and the Abizarite. Mm -hmm. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine presses to hide it from the Midianites. All right? So now a prophet came, let him know what's going on. Then we get introduced to a man named Gideon. Watch this. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Mm -hmm. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? Mm -hmm. And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? Y'all hear what he's saying? Right? He had a question. Remember, remember, when we came into Judges, Joshua died. And then the people followed righteously until all the leaders who led with Joshua, until all of them died. After all of Joshua and all the leaders died, then we start doing whatever we wanted to do. So then we would be in bondage to these other nations for about 14 years, 14 to 40 years or whatever, right? Then after that, God would raise up a judge. So we talked about some of the judges. We talked about Ehud, we talked about Deborah, and it was a few other ones that came in, right? Othniel and all that, right? So a few other judges that came in. These, it would be 40 years under the judge and 17 years in bondage and 40 other years under the judge and 17. So this is going up and down. So time has passed by. So now we get to Gideon. And when Gideon come and he had a prophet and the angel of the Lord, the prophet came, the angel of the Lord started speaking to him. The first thing he want to ask is, so what happened to all the miracles? If God is with us, man. I mean, we heard about what happened in Egypt. Y'all always tell that story, but I'm trying to figure out, like, where the miracles at? So where is he at in itself right now? He don't believe. He's struggling. He's like, man, uh, it's hard for him to, hard for him to believe. That's why we have to kind of empathize and sympathize with our people now. This is a man that was maybe a hundred, hundred so years removed from... Some amazing things happening. We're 2,000 years removed from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're 2,000 years removed from amazing things happening. That's why we, the further away you get, it's easier for people to be like, oh, no, Jesus didn't exist. 
right? But if you look, I mean, you just pick up any history book and read anything that mentions Yahushua around that time period where he is alive, a hundred years later even. None of them suggest that he didn't exist. You'll never see nothing reading like, oh no, within that time frame, oh no, that guy was just a hoax, it was a fake. All of them suggest, talk about him like he a real person. Right? But it's when we get this far away, all of a sudden we smarter than the people that used to live in that time. Because we got all the evidence in the world, apparently. Right? But it's just the further you get, the less you believe. So now he's looking like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, where the miracles at? If, you know what I'm saying? If you God and you, you know what I'm saying? Like, where, where the miracles at? Let's hear about it. But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Mm -hmm. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in, Mish in, Mas in Manasseh, and I am the least of my father's house. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall smite the Midianites as one man. Uh -huh. And he said unto him, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that you talk with me. So you see, he's still looking like, okay, listen. Okay, if I found favor with you, just show me a sign that I'm really talking to you. Right? Show me a sign that this is real right now. Okay, let's see what sign come up. Depart not from here, I pray thee, until I come unto thee and bring forth my present and set it before thee. Uh-huh. And he said, I will tarry until you come again. Mm-hmm. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid and eleven cakes of an ephah of flour. Uh -huh. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, uh -huh. and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. That's right. And the angel of the Lord God said, uh, and the angel of the Lord God said unto him, Take the flesh and the eleven cakes. So he said, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Watch this. And lay them upon the rock and pour out the broth. He said, and then lay them upon the rock, and then make sure you pour out the broth. Watch this. And he did so. Uh -huh. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand. So the angel of the Lord, he reached out the end of his staff that was in his hand. Watch this. And touched the flesh, the unleavened cakes. And, and then he touched the up. flesh and the unleavened cakes. And what? And there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. So that was the sign that he gave him. Right? He said, I just touch it with his staff. Whole fire just came and engulfed the whole thing. Right? What else? Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And that was it. Angel departed. The angel of the Lord just departed. He left. Right? So he asked him for a sign and he gave him one. We look at it and a lot of times, there's a lot of people out there that ask God for a sign today, right? He's like, just give me a sign and we feel like we don't get one. Right? You think he is the only person in Israel at that time asking for a sign? No. Most of God said, oh, well, I just need something to happen now. And I need you to do it. All right, I'll give you a sign. Most high God know how to get people to bleed. Grab a, let's go back to John. Hold, hold we got, we're going to come back here. Let's go to John chapter 4, verse, uh, give me uh, John chapter 4. Let's try John chapter 4, verse 4. Verse 43. Give me John chapter 4, verse 43. And after two days he departed from there. He went into Galilee, for Yahushua himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. Uh huh. Then when he was coming to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast. Uh huh. For they also went into the feast. Mm hmm. So Yahshua came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. Mm -hmm. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. Mm -hmm. When he heard that Yahshua was come out of Judah into Galilee, he went unto him. He went unto him, and watch this. And besought him that he would come down uh -huh. and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Okay. Then said Yahshua unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Yahshua already knew. He said, this man asked me to heal his son. He's like, listen, I'm going to go ahead and do it because 
If these people don't see signs and wonders, there's no way they're going to believe. So now we have to ask ourselves, if, if Yahushua would know that, and today there are no signs and wonders, what do you think he wants to happen right now? People believe. If there's no signs and wonders, he know that except people see signs and wonders, they're not going to believe. Right? So people, for people to believe, you have to see signs and wonders. He just told us that. Today, there's no signs and wonders. What is that telling us? People ain't gonna believe. This is a time of unbelief. So we stress ourselves out. I mean, why don't people get it? Why don't they see it? It's right there. Why do people preach in lies? Me too, we all do, right? We stress ourselves out about it. But the fact of the matter is, if the most high God wanted people to believe, guess what he'd do? A couple signs, a couple wonders. And he won't have a problem with it. Christians, Christians in some of our churches in our time past, they'd make us feel bad about asking God for a sign. Don't you require nothing to God. You just got to believe. Right? You tempting God. Right? Was Gideon tempting God? Gideon looked at the man like, listen, listen. <laughs> If I found favor in your sight, just let me know we talking for real. You wait right here. I'm about to go get a kid of the goat. You know what I'm saying? Go pour some broth on the homie. I'm going to put him right on this rock. You just do what you do. Angel didn't make no fuss about it. Reached out. Whole thing just went to fire. Then he like, I'm out of here. Peace. Right? Give me 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, actually. The BET, Peter Pop Off, all that's obviously for... He said BET. Yeah. The what? Fake. BET what? Like Peter Pop Off. What's that? That's a person? What's Peter Pop Off? Y'all never seen him? No. They like, when they claim that they heal people, like people can't walk and they heal crutches and that. Oh, you mean the early morning show? Yeah, stuff like that. His name's Peter Pop Off? Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. You ever seen him? No. Oh, no, you've seen him. You may not have seen him. Uh, oh, but you've seen him. You, you, seen him. Seen him. you know what I'm saying? You've seen him. Give me a, give me, give me I've seen the show before. Yeah. I'll, show you, I'll show you what he is. You know, no, let, me, let me just get the, the yellow shirt. No, the, you know what I'm saying? The, the Latin shirt. Let me see that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? This, this is him. You know what I'm saying? Come here. Woo! Yeah. Everybody just fall out. Oh, oh, my goodness. Yes. Woo! This whole side of church, it'll fall out. Oh, oh, oh right there. The one that like Russell Westbrook? Oh, oh, oh not him. Oh, okay. Not Westbrook. No, I don't, I don't think that's his name. That is, is his name? I don't think it's. It's a little pretty one. You know what I'm saying? He got like the eyes and stuff. All the girls. That thing be funny. He be on live. You know what I'm saying? Preaching about God. All the girls be like, hey, daddy. I was like, this, this, this is wild. Yeah, that's, that's extremely wild. I was like, this thing is wild. I looked, I looked him up, you know what I'm saying? You know, I be trying to find dirt on these preacher. So I looked him up, right? He got a video <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> he got a video on YouTube. And he was preaching like in his room. You know what I'm saying? And it was like in a room or whatever. I don't know. It was a small little room. But in the background, as he like preaching, you know what I'm saying? And, and trying to inspire people, I guess. You know what I'm saying? You got, you got like, you can hear like somebody yelling in the background, like just screaming. And it's like getting closer and closer and closer. Bro, his wife bust in a room. He's like, you a liar! And flipping out, hitting him and stuff. Then the camera cut out, bro. <laughs> that thing is literally online. I, I laughed so hard. I was like, man, these people have lost their darn mind. That's crazy. But, you know what I'm saying? That's how it go. Huh? I just said, who, who this one that you're talking about? He, 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 he does, like, the Miracle Spring water. Yeah, all that stuff is a scam. Yeah. All that stuff is a scam. So, and, and the cold thing is, I'm not even going to go as far as say, a lot of them people just scams all together. They, it's just a show, right. right? But when you go to, like, just see regular churches, you, you see some stuff, right? You see people speaking in tongues, and that thing don't feel like, nah, I see some stuff. That's a, that thing don't feel like no, you know what I'm saying, like, I just learned how to move my tongue like that. That thing almost sounds legit. It's like, well, what's going on? These people getting spirits now. I just, it just ain't the spirit of God. 
Right? It's spirit. Not everybody don't. I'm, I'm, not, I'm never going to be the one to say everybody just faking it. Now, some of these people not faking at all. Right? Some of these people, you know what I'm saying? They getting hands laid on it. They but really falling out. It's just not the spirit of God. They get the, you know, they get the shakes and start running around the church and all that stuff. Yeah, it's just not the spirit of God. We don't, we don't know what the spirit of God. We've never been taught what the spirit of God really looked like. Right? We've been taught you can't stop sinning. Right? We've been taught, we've been taught that if some of us, you have to speak in tongues to be saved. Right? We've been taught that um, God loves everybody. Right? So we don't have. We have no way to identify the spirit of the Most High God. But when you look at it, you look at the book, right? When you look at directly at the information, it tell you flat out. Oh, if y'all gonna speak in tongues, only three, and one at a time. Oh, 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 wait, hold on, I'm not done yet. And it has to be an interpreter. That thing lined that all the way up, right? That thing lined it all. It goes away from just okay, we just speaking in tongues because we. Every church we've been in speaking tongues. How many people are speaking in tongues at one time? That thing start off with the pastor, don't he? Pastor, get into that word, and let me tell you, uh, you got to see. Uh, oh, I'm so love it. Right? It start off with him. As soon as pastor get that lover double out, whoa! Then it's that, that lady, in the, it's always the lady on the left in the front. Right? She gets to start jumping up and down. Oh, double, 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 jumping up like that. Then after that, the one that so then the usher come over to her because she got on the darn dress and they so decent in there they ain't about to let her be jumping around with the dress on she might fall out somebody see her underwear right they so decent all everything they doing indecent but they gonna they gonna worry about that right okay so they gonna they gonna come cover up soon the usher get the person next to her see her, it just drop on her Ooh! Ooh! then you get with the one that just start jumping and running around boom <laughs> then they start playing that when when the dude that play the organ when he starts seeing them. Then he get with the program, cause now he getting the spirit. He don't, 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 don't. Then that don't, don't. A whole church just start falling out. Bump, 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 bump. Everybody just start marching. Why you gotta look? Like? You gotta look. You gotta look, and you gotta stop, and you gotta say, all this is not fake, right? It's easy for us to be. Oh, they just faking. Are they choreographed? When we look at it, it felt real. Why did it feel real? Because there's really something going on there. But when you look at the book, listen, when you look at the book, and the book tell you one person speak in tongues at a time, he said at the max three people speak. One at a time. And it has to be an interpreter. That cleans the whole house. So what have I been sitting in this whole time? Mm -hmm. That would be what? Ain't nobody tell you what it mean, no. no it just, Ain't nobody stand up and be like, no. oh, the brother said this, that, and the other, da, da, da. and uh, the brother here is praying to God about this, that. That was supposed to happen. Yeah. You supposed to have, I mean, one person go, and everybody's supposed to be like, okay, okay, so the brother, what the brother is saying is the most high God is healing him and healing his family. That's what tongues is supposed to be. You speak in tongues and somebody interpret it because you speak in a spiritual language. So it's somebody who's spiritual that can understand that spiritual language in that moment because God gave it to them. For some reason, that's not around. The tongues, is, look, you can find, uh, you, can, you can't throw a rock without hitting somebody that speaks tongues in one of these churches, right? But I ain't never seen a darn interpreter. Why God give so many tongues and ain't get no darn interpreter when his rule is you got to have an interpreter? Somebody got some explaining to do. <laughs> right? But it take us to know the book. If we don't know the book, how are we going to figure that out? Right? And to know the book, you got to believe. And to believe, you got to have evidence. And in times like these, there's not a ton of evidence. It's not a ton of miracles. Right? And the miracles we do see is leading us to falsehood. It's leading us to a prosperity gospel. Right? It's leading us to, you know, God just wants you to be rich. Right? That's the stuff Creflo, T.D. Jakes, all them, that's what they preach. 
Joel Osteen, all of them, I want you to be rich. Right? You, I mean, if you pray hard enough, if you live, you know what I'm saying, godly enough, then God will uh, God, uh, bless you with your finances, right? He'll bless your finances. Oh, a very important part of that, you got to do what? Mm. <laughs> got to tie. I mean, you got to give to God for him to give to you now. You, no, let me tell you something. One verse that they got right, you reap what you darn sow now. You know what I'm talking about? You ain't about, listen, you, you want to sow your 10%? Gotta increase you abundantly more than that. They be lighting them verses up. Man, they ain't teaching y'all darn nothing. Just, just making a darn mockery of you. Right? We gotta make sure we just come to understanding this stuff. Where we at? First Corinthians. It's First Corinthians. Give me a. Uh, we ain't gotta do one. Just give me a First Corinthians. Give me a. Give me First Corinthians. Uh, uh, give me First Corinthians 19. First Corinthians chapter one verse 19. Chapter 1, verse 19? Yeah, chapter 1, verse 19. I ain't got no other water. No. So, Har, can you bring me one more water? One more water? For it is. Yeah, one more, please. Okay, Nope, just one. Thank you. For it is written. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Mm -hmm. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Mm -hmm. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Mm -hmm. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Mm -hmm. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Mm -hmm. For the Jews require a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom. The Jews require what? A sign. Why do you think we're looking for signs? Why you think? Why you think we like all that jumping around in church? We think that's a sign. That's our. That's our language. If it looked like a miracle, why else would DP? Why else would we be up three o'clock in the morning watching BET trying to see uh, what's his name pop off? Why you know what I'm saying? Why up? That's our people. You think they putting on BET? Why is he on BET? <laughs> that's black folk. Right. No, I I didn't say what he was. I'm saying he's on BET. Because it's black folks. We gonna watch it. It's Why a, are we watching it? It's a white guy called Peter Popoff. Yeah. He ought to be ashamed. So. Wow. Right? But we gonna watch it. That's our, they marketing to us. Because guess what we seek? A sign. We want to see a miracle. Right? If you look at, okay, y'all think I'm lying. If you look at if you look at some of the pastors on a white channel, right? Some of these other, it's white people channels that three in the morning, they got the same thing going on. They got these pastors. Listen to how their sermon goes in comparison to ones that's on the black channel. On the white channel, you can have a lot of explaining. They're going to be quoting the church fathers, historians, Aristotle, all types of stuff, right? Read that again for me. Verse 22. For the Jews require a sign. Jews require a sign. What? Greeks seek after wisdom. So when we listen to things marketed to white people, it's going to be about wisdom. You go to BET, they trying to show you signs. These people ain't stupid. They know how to market. They know who their audience is. They know how to get it. White man say, oh, that would, that would, that would be black or white, huh? That's what they get. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? We can do that. I don't know, Peter. What are you gonna call yourself? Pop off. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> they make a fool out of. Us. Constantly, just make a fool out of. Us. Right? And if at some point we just gotta step back and we'd be like, this is darn ridiculous. This is be great. <laughs> this is darn ridiculous. You got a man, Peter Darn Popo. This is darn ridiculous. Swinging his darn jacket around. Smacking be hot duking people. Right on the darn. This darn. I mean, and we just sit here and we send our money in. You know we are. You know we send our money in. Danielle, you better get a refund. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
Antonio. That's how I get. <laughs> oh, you didn't know. You didn't know you was a pop off product, huh? That's how I start. That's how I start. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Don't know about the shame. Right you know what I'm saying, Miss? With, with your time. You know what I'm saying? Pastor Pop Off send that, you know what I'm saying, send that prayer package. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Antonio right. wake up covered in a whole bunch of cloths. Like, what in the world? <laughs> you see the uh the video of Richard Pryor when he's making fun of some of the pastors? No. Man. I got all boys. I gotta show it to you. These people make a fool out of us. I gotta show it to you. I'm gonna show it to you. They make a fool out of us. This is a uh, grab a. Uh, let's go back. Let's go back to judges actually. The judges. What we leave off? Judges what? Twenty. Uh, six twenty-two. Twenty-two. It's Judges chapter six, verse twenty-two. It's Judges chapter six, verse twenty-two. All right, don't be ashamed. Don't be don't be ashamed that you want to, you know what I'm saying? That you want to see some evidence. Don't be ashamed that you're looking at it and you skeptical. You know what I'm saying? You're looking at it and be like, yeah, well, mm, I don't know. But also don't be apathetic. Right? Y'all know what apathetic mean? You know what apathetic mean? Opposite of empathetic. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, kinda. Kinda. Right? Apathetic just means that you do nothing. You know what I'm saying? You just kind of like out of whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like a whatever. Like it's like, uh. All right? Don't sit here and have questions and be apathetic about it. Don't sit here and have questions. Just be like, yeah, well, whatever. I have questions. I'm not going to try to get no answers. Listen, there's a lot of stuff you ain't got to get answers to. When it comes to your soul, you get the answers. You get the answers. Brother asked me, or I think it was a brother. It might have been a sister. I don't know. But so they, they text me and they have, they're like, well, why you put the, why you put the, uh, the number up? You know what I'm saying? On all the videos. I was like, let me tell you very clearly. Me personally? I said we actually. I was like, we believe that if you're going to learn from somebody, you need to be able to ask some questions and you need to be able to challenge what they're talking about if you feel like you need to challenge what they're talking about. But what you don't do is just find something on YouTube so you, because it sounds like something you might want to hear and then go with it. I was like, no, I can't. You got to challenge people. You know what I'm saying? And I know that not everybody can be everywhere in the world. So if you want to watch me on YouTube, I'm going to put my number down there. And I want you to reach out if you got a problem. Reach out if you got a question. But get the questions answered. Right? A couple people ain't text back yet. And that's my fault. I'm going to do better. But you know. You know what I'm saying? It's like, get the questions answered. You know what I'm saying? You got to get your questions answered. Otherwise, you know what I'm saying? What we here for? You know what I'm saying? Don't halfway be righteous. You know what I'm saying? Just do that thing all the way. Or, you know what I'm saying? Go... Go all the way to hell. But enjoy yourself before you go. You know what I'm saying? It don't make no, it don't make no sense to go to hell and just be miserable your whole life and then go to hell. That don't make no darn sense. If you're going to go to hell, you better do that thing. Roll it. You know what I'm saying? Go have you some fun. It's a whole lot of fun you can have out here going to hell now. That thing don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? If I'm going to go to hell, I'm going to hell like, you know what I'm saying? I'm living it up. And then I'm going to die for the rest of my life and burn. Try to get as much as you can out of it. Yo, but going to hell, though, for sure. Keep going. This is uh, Judges chapter 6. This is verse 22. And when Gideon perceived that he was, he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. Mm -hmm. The Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it... Yahuwah Shalom, mm -hmm. unto this day, it is yet an of Ophrah of the Abizarites. Uh -huh. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath, that thy father has, and cut down the grove that is by it. Alright, so first thing after he, you know, so he gave, he showed him a sign, then he made a sacrifice to him. First thing he told him to do after that. Tear down that stuff that you that's at your father's house. That's our that I mean that's how it has to work for us, right? We see our sign, we get our reason to believe, right? Whatever that reason may be, we get our reason to believe. So we start to believe. What you think come next? Get all that stuff out of here. Tear that stuff down. All this stuff, man. Clean all this stuff that you've been doing. Tear that stuff down. Clean your house. Right. 
Consecrate yourself. Repent. Turn from your sin. Your pop got a your your pop got a altar to bay all. Oh, you mind now? Just go in there. Your pop gonna be mad. Tear that stuff down. Watch it. Keep going. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had said unto him. And so it was, because he feared his father's household and the men of the city, that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. Mm -hmm. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down, mm -hmm. and the grove was cut down that was by it. And the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. And they said one to another, Who has done this thing? When they inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, has done this thing. Mm -hmm. Then the men of the city and, uh, said unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die, because he hath cast down the altar of Baal, and because he hath cut down the grove that was by it. Right? Jump on down to uh, verse uh, 33. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. Mm -hmm. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet. And Abiezer was greatly after him. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also gathered after him, and sent him messengers unto Asher. And he sent messengers unto Asher, and unto Zebulun, and unto Naphtali. Naphtali and they came up to meet them. Mm -hmm. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor, and the dew on the fleece only, and it will be dry upon all the earth beside. Right? Look, so he, he asked for another sign now. He's like, listen, if you really going to say, so most High God already showed him a sign. And after he showed him a sign, he had him tear down some stuff. But now it's time to go to war. He's like, okay, listen, listen, listen. If this is really going to happen, and I'm really going to save Israel, then I'm going to put a fleece on the ground. And the dew is going to be all over the ground, but guess where it's not going to be? On the fleece. On the fleece. Y'all know what dew is? We don't have no dew in here in Vegas. Y'all know what dew is? Right. Yeah. yeah, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like when the water, you know what I'm saying? It's like it didn't rain, yeah. but it's almost like it rained on the grass. All the grass is just wet, right? So we don't really have that too much here. But in California, they have it a lot, right? You, you walk out in the morning, all the grass and the ground is wet, you know what I'm saying? Just just because, you know what I'm saying? No rain, no nothing, but the grass and everything is just wet. No sprinklers, nothing, it's just wet. So he's saying, listen, I'm going to put this blanket down, right? And leave it outside. The blanket going to be dry, but everything around the blanket going to be covered in dew. He said, God, if that happens, then I know this is really you. Right? Let's see what happens. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, in. and Ebiezer was gathered after him. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Asher, and unto Zebulun, and unto Naphtali, and they came up to meet him. Mm -hmm. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as you have said, behold, I will put fleece of wool in the floor, and if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. So it was backwards. The dew has to be only on the blanket, but all everything around has to be dry, right? He said, if that happened, then I know. You know what I'm saying? This is real. Watch this. And it was so, for he rose up early on the morrow and thrust the fleece together and wringed the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. Right? So the dew was only on the fleece, nothing else. But watch this. And Gideon said unto God, let not thine anger be hot against me. All right, he said, look, 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 God. Don't be mad at me now, God. But. And I will speak but this once. Mm -hmm. Let me prove, I pray thee. But, mm -hmm. this once with, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry upon the fleece. And upon all the ground, let there be dew. Mm -hmm. and God so now he flipped it. He was like, okay. It might have been, you know what I'm saying, like, might have been by chance. You know what I'm saying? That the fleece had all the wet and everything around it would drop. Might be, you know, that might get happen. But just to make sure, don't be mad at me now. God, can we reverse it? 
This time, keep the fleece dry and make all the ground around it wet. Let's see what happens. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew all on the ground. Right? So the Most High God gave him both signs. Flipped it around and everything for him. Didn't complain. Didn't strike him down. None of that stuff. Why? He needed him to bleed. He's like, yeah, I, got something I, I got something I want you to do right now. All right? Go ahead and believe. I got you. Don't even worry about it. It's important that we understand that. When God wants people to believe, it's not hard for him to get people to believe. He know what it takes. He even told you, remember, he told, uh, grab, uh, grab Matthew, Matthew chapter 11. Yeah, right, watch it. It's Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. When I read this and like understood it, this thing blew my mind. It changed the whole way I looked at God, changed the whole way I looked at all this stuff. I said, oh, we don't even know who we dealing with. God is a cold brother. Now, he don't say it like God, God don't play. Then began he to upbraid the cities where in What did upbraid mean? Uh, reprimand. It's Matthew 11, 20. When the book say upbraid, he talking about, oh, he yelling at some folks. Right? He reprimanding them. Right? He looking at folks. He talking about, listen, y'all need to get it darn together. That's what he talking about. You know what I'm he reprimanding folks. He fussing at them. Right? This is Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. Watch this. Then Watch. he began to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. So he did all the miracles in front of these people. And they still didn't repent. Watch what he say. Go unto the Chorazin. Uh -huh. Go unto the Bethsaida. Uh -huh. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. So now you know the question we got to ask ourselves? He said... Woe unto you, right? I'm walking around y'all cities doing miracles and all types of stuff, and none of y'all want to repent. Y'all still living y'all life the way y'all want to live y'all life, right? He said, okay, woe unto you. Do y'all know, though, if had this been done in Tyre and Sidon, these people would have repented in sackcloth and ashes. What does that tell us? Tyre and Sidon both got conquered. All the people just darn died. So that means that if God really wanted them to repent, he could have went there doing signs and wonders, but he didn't. Right? He knew it. He's looking at it like, oh, well, if I would have did that there, they all would have repented. However, they didn't, and they all, they was all dead. But God knew what it would take to get make them repent. We have to consider that. We have to consider that, you know, well, yeah, I want to have a miracle now, right? Sometimes I don't want to have a miracle. That thing floored me. I looked at that. I was like, whoa, right? Whoa. Like, we not dealing. Like, all this, oh, God. God is, he's just chasing after everyone, and he wants everyone. He do want everyone to be saved. That's a fact. His butt ain't chasing after a whole lot of people. Few people here, Chase. There's a few people here, Chase. Chase Gideon. Right? He showed up to Gideon. Right? After he showed up to Gideon, Gideon asked him for a sign. I showed up already. And then now I want a sign. Okay. Touch out, burn the fire. Okay, good. Now it's time to go to war. Okay, well, look, give me another sign. Okay, I'll do that for you too. Then after that, okay, give me another sign. Okay, I'll do that too. And if we look at the next chapter, right? He give him another sign. You know what I'm saying? He going to he going and Gideon starting to get scared a little bit. But the most I got was like, you know what? Go ahead. I'm going to tell you where to go. And you're going to hear all your enemies talk. So he went up there and he started listening to them talk. And they're talking about, listen, I had a dream. They all, you know, they had a dream. God gave them dreams. He's like, I had a dream. He's like, what was your dream? Dream was this, that, and the other. Then the other dude interpreted the dream. Oh, here's the interpretation of that dream. That was the, the, the sword of Gideon in, in God's army. So they was already shook. They were nervous. Like, oh, what are we going to do? Gideon heard that. He was like, all right, let's get him. <laughs> right? So the whole time, he's walking Gideon through this thing. Right? Because yeah. he wanted to. Yeah. That's what he wanted to do. He had something he wanted to get done. Gideon was the man there to do it. We look at it today, uh, that's not so much the case. Right? Because if he wanted 
A lot of these people to repent. He can make it happen. Give me John. Give me John chapter 10. Let's get up out of here. Let's get about it. Here's, uh, here's John chapter 20. Give me verse 24. I'm going to show y'all where we come in. After we get John chapter 20, give me John 17. That would have been more tolerable for a tired sight. That's tough. This is John 20, verse 24. Then we're going to go to John chapter 17. It's John chapter 20, verse 24. Watch this. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Yahushua came. Mm -hmm. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands. So this is what Thomas running his mouth saying. They, everybody like, We've seen the Lord. Thomas like, Listen, except I see the man. Say, I ain't believing nothing y'all talk about. When I see him, for you know, you know you always got that friend to run his darn mouth, think he tough. He be like, Look, we all see. Listen, when I see his hands, what else? The print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into the side, into his side, I will not believe. He's like, man, I ain't believing this foolish y'all talking about till I see it for myself. When I see his hands, and I can put my fingers all through his hands, and I can thrust my arm through the, the, the hole in this side, then I believe that mess. Right? Let's hear about it. He like, man, ain't no dead man wake up. Y'all crazy. Then Yahshua, then came Yahshua, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Doors were shut. Man just popped up. What's going on, y'all? Peace. <laughs> <laughs> he just popped the door. All the doors closed. He just showed up. Hey, what's going on? How y'all doing? Peace be unto you. How do you think everybody was looking? They'll tell you, watch this. Then said he to Thomas, Reach here thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach here thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not and be not faithless, but believing. All right? Oh, you were running your mouth? Okay. Here you go. <laughs> not everybody gonna get that though. Mm. Watch this. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, my God, my Lord and my God. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua said unto him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. He said, because you seen me, you believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. He said, there's some other people that only heard about it by the word. I mean, that's what happened. I mean, so like, he said, blessed are the people that have not seen and believed. Well, how did they know to believe? Because somebody was like, yo, we saw Yahushua. And they was like, for real? Oh, that's crazy. And they believed them. He said, blessed are those people. He said, you see, now Thomas, I'm going to look out for you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You run in your mouth, go ahead and touch, do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? It's real. He's like, now you see me and you believe. But man, some folks that they ain't going to see. Bless are them, because they're going to believe too. That's where we get it at. That's hard. It's hard to believe without seeing it. Now, I don't want y'all to think that the Most High God is set up in a way where he like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, I want you to believe blindly. Oh, I'm gonna give you evidence. That's why this whole book is together. If it wasn't, if it didn't, if it didn't have nothing about that, this book would be this big. You, just, you know what I'm saying? You just, you can knock, you can knock this out in a couple pages if it wasn't about evidence. But you'll see throughout this whole book, you have genealogies, you have history, you have laws, you have everything because it's a document of real life stuff. Because I have to show you that this is real. I have to give you a whole history of people to show you. That this is not just something that somebody came up with. Right. It's about evidence. Right. right? I mean, sure, we don't get to see all the miracles, but you get to see that everything is well documented in this trustworthy evidence. Real quick, John 17. John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. 
As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Mm -hmm. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they might also might be sanctified, sacrifice, sanctified through the truth. Uh huh. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also. He said, that Neither that pray I for these alone, but. But for them also. That what? Which shall believe on me through their word. He said, I'm not just praying for the ones that's right here with me. I'm also going to pray on the ones that believe on me through their word. What are we reading right now? He is praying for the disciples, for the apostles. What are we reading right now? He's praying for everybody else that's going to come. Well, you're reading the book of what? John was a what? He was a disciple. Yeah. He's an apostle. So he's saying, I'm not just praying for the apostles. I'm praying for the people that's going to believe on me through the apostles' word. And now we read the apostles' word. That's how we get in. Whether it come by sign or whether it come by word, we got to have what it takes to look at it and believe it. Not everybody going to be able to do that. Unfortunately. As much as we would love it. It's scarce. And the further and further we get away, the harder and harder it is. But one day, most high God going to be like, all right, I want some people to believe now. Then one day, out of the blue, it's going to seem like, I'm like, oh, I want some people to believe. And then we're going to see signs. And we're going to see wonders. And hopefully we get our butts up out of here pretty soon. Right? We just got to be in place. It's going to be a mean thing for us to be in place before that happens. Right? For us to already have the wisdom. I already had the understanding before the signs start coming. That way he sent the prophet. All he got to do is correct a few things in our understanding. Some stuff we've been wrong about, the stuff, some stuff we didn't know increase us and help our faith out a little bit. We'd be in a good spot to move. Right? That's what we're here for. Learn the word. Hear the word, learn the word. Right? The most high God give us a sign that just make our faith stronger. But even without it, you know what I'm saying? We're here for the ones who believe on his word through the word of the apostles. Any questions?